Well, greetings once again. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Handheld Hack Netcast. We're talking about all things handheld, like my tablet that I have here. And I, I use this to kind of keep me straight as we talk about all the different things that have to do with handheld computing. And they come from directly from the blog on handheld computing that I do called the Handheld Hack, appropriately enough. And I'll put the URL up right here, handheldhack.com. Check it out. Last time on Handheld Hack number four, we had the Handheld Device News and a Kindle Software Update. Today, we're going to get right into some new items that we want to talk about. As I wrote this particular item, January 27th, it was the second birthday of the iPad. Now, what I find amazing about that is it's only been just over two years, barely <laughs> over two years since the iPad was introduced. And yet tablets now have become practically ubiquitous. We use tablets all the time. The technology has just skyrocketed in terms of user acceptance. And the iPad has been a big part of that, kind of the forerunner. But also another big push in the tablet arena has been the Kindle Fire. I have a Kindle Fire and I love my Kindle Fire. And I'm telling you, a lot of people, a large number of people, have purchased the Kindle Fire and are really benefiting from that new platform. So, kind of celebrate the advent of the tablet. Now, next item here we want to talk about is the Sony Vita or Vita. Vita, Vita, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Will it be hackable? Well, you know, as they say, if you build it, <laughs> they will come. And I'm sure the people who hack such things will be challenged and will want to hack it. The Sony PlayStation Portable, Sony PSP was a dream for hackers as they were able to pretty easily crack the first Sony handheld, getting it to run homebrew as well as a variety of other applications. Will the Sony PS Vita end up being a hacker's dream or a nightmare? Since we saw the Sony PSP turn into a device that was able to be manipulated by software to run homebrew applications, pirated software is a variety of other things with great ease. Sony set out with the Sony PS Vita to try to correct these issues that plagued the original handheld by being far more proactive in its attempts to fight hackers trying to crack the Sony PS Vita. So they're making it harder for folks to hack, but you know how that goes. Just more of a challenge. <laughs> so I think the hackers will be out in force and they'll probably be able to hack it. We'll see. You know, Sony says, say they built in some stuff to keep it from happening, but we'll find out. All right, this next article is interesting. Matter of fact, if you will go to the article on the handheld hack, there's actually a video there I'm going to start the video. <clears throat> Hear that? It's coming off of YouTube. I've got it running right there where you can see it. Now the cool thing about this is, this is all coming off of a handheld device. Let me pause it there. But if you can see this, try to do it where there won't be so much glare. This is a handheld device that takes the GameCube and reduces it down to a handheld device. This is basically a special mod that this guy has, uh, has done and he's offering it for sale. So he will actually build you your own handheld version of the GameCube uh, for a fee. Now it says here between $700 and $1,000 he'll build you one. So, uh, kind of expensive, but uh, pretty neat idea actually. So, it's a pretty neat hardware hack. Uh, I'd encourage you to go check out the video, check out the article that I linked to here, and uh, see how this guy hacked the hardware of the GameCube and reduced it down in size. Matter of fact, if you like seeing stuff like that, I'd encourage you to go check out the Revision 3 show uh, this is called the Ben Heck Show. It's Ben Heckendorn, and he is a uh, an electrical engineer and hardware modder, and he does all kinds of cool stuff like this. So check out that show. I think you'll find it really interesting. 
All right, last item this week is an open source tablet. Now this is pretty cool. They actually have a tablet that uh, it's a seven inch tablet, which is similar to the Kindle uh, Fire. And instead of a dual core processor, though it has a one gigahertz ARM processor, but only one core, 512 meg of RAM, four gig of internal memory, a Mali 400 GPU, and it's called the Spark. This is a open source hardware, open source uh, software version of a tablet which is available for $260 and it runs Linux. Pretty neat. Uh, it also runs the KDE uh, interface which is actually a spinoff of Mego, the Mego interface called Mir as its OS and then KDE's Plasma Active User Interface kind of layered over the top of it and uh, it's thought to be uh, the actual hardware is thought to be the Zenith Zenithink Slate rebranded, uh, which means that if, if that's true, it means the screen resolution is only 800 by 400. But it's set to re retail for 200 euros, which is about $260, uh, you know, U.S. currency. So check it out. Open source tablet. The cool idea about this is it's open source. It's very open, very easy to hack allows you to go in and tweak, maybe try different distros of Linux, you know, put Android on, whatever you want to do, you can try it on this open tablet. Pretty neat stuff. So, that's it for this week. Remember, until next time, you're only as good as your last hack.